Hi, and welcome to this month's Grizzcast. I'm Sergeant First Class Paul Wade, and I'm here in Iwata-san Training Area in northern Japan for Operation North Wind 2008. Coming up on this special edition, we will take an exclusive look at Operation North Wind 2008 and the opening ceremony, which kicked it off in early March. And we will take you into the snow-covered fields of Camp Iwate, where the infantry get a chance to sharpen their skills. Then, we will check out some of our own California Guard soldiers who are heating things up in the dining facility. And welcome back. More than 700 participants from the east and west gathered on a barren parade field to mark the beginning of Operation North Wind. A light dusting of snow fell upon Camp Iwate, Japan as Operation North Wind 2008 officially kicked off. But despite the cold, a sense of warmth between the two nations filled the air. This as military forces from Japan and the United States stood together with one goal in mind. I am positive that by the end of North Wind 08, both the 5th Infantry Regiment and the Task Force from the United States will use this training opportunity to foster and increase our bilateral operability through tough, realistic, and demanding training that is equally challenging and rewarding for our two great armies. As a friend, I really hope to establish our trust and friendship. From the bottom of my heart, if we have to fight an emergency, at the risk of our lives. I hope this training and cultural exchange event will help us do that. Operation Northwind specifically focuses on developing infantry skills at the squad, platoon, and company level. This year's U.S. task force is made up of National Guard units from three different states and active duty soldiers based in Japan. This is truly a distinct honor for me and all of the U.S. task force soldiers coming to Japan from as far away as Alaska, Georgia, and Florida, and also nearby Camp Zama. For the next two weeks, the training will be intense. However, leaders from both sides are looking forward to the exchange and a successful mission between the United States of America and the land of the rising sun. Reporting from Camp Iwate, Japan, I'm Sergeant First Class Paul Wade. Combat arms troops had a chance to light it up as they tested their training during a three-day FTX. As Operation North Wind moves into full swing, Japanese and U.S. forces are ready to move. For several days, both sides have been on the field, learning from each other on how to improve their tactical infantry skills. We've been uh, training up how to move up to a position and then uh, how to clear a building and hopefully we'll get to do some high-speed training with the, with the Japanese soldiers, teach them. I know some of them already have. We are learning a lot from the Americans on how to clear a building and how to be able to use our weapons and fire quickly. For the most part, this exercise has been a show-and-tell of sorts, with the Americans executing their moves while the Japanese observe, and vice versa. They're high speed, they got the morale up there. You know, they're here to train. This is what they do, it's what they live for as much as we live for it every day. For Specialist Oliver and other U.S. soldiers, Operation Northwind has been a cultural exchange since this is his first time training side by side with foreign troops. He believes that what the Americans and Japanese are doing here plays an important role in international relations and lays a foundation to strengthen the ties between the two countries. If you had a pebble in, in, the, in the path, it, we've helped to pave the way. Reporting from Camp Iwate, Japan, I'm Sergeant First Class Paul Wade. And finally, we turn the spotlight on some Golden State cooks who really put together a recipe for success. PFC Joe Samudio tells us what's cooking. There's something heated up in Sergeant First Class Lawrence Brown's world. As a food service supervisor with the California National Guard's Delta Company, 18th Cavalry, Brown finds himself and nine other CalGuard cooks in Camp Iwate, Japan, supporting an exercise known as Operation North Wind. In late February 2008, he and his team arrived at this Japanese training base in northern Japan before the main body. Within 24 hours, they were ready to feed more than 250 soldiers within the task force. I'll tell you, these soldiers, I'm very proud of these soldiers. They've really been putting an outstanding effort into getting things uh, done. And, the first couple of days is always the hardest because you're working out all the bugs. When we first got here, they told us to go into the defect. We had some hot coffee, 
it was really cold, so it was really nice to have something nice and hot to drink and eat when we got off the buses. One of the soldiers who works for Brown is Specialist Aries. Working alongside with cooks from the combat arms units from Alaska and Florida National Guard, Aries works long hours to prepare a four-plus meal schedule. We're supposed to feed 300 people per meal. Knowing the fact that I was able to help feed them on time, make sure they got everything right, kind of gives me that sensation of an accomplishment for the day. Once the meal is ready, it is moved to the dining hall. When the troops begin to line up, this is when Aries says he looks for the telltale signs that his team did a good job. All it takes is a grin, like, oh, yeah. Once you get your plate, you look at it and you smell it, oh, yeah, that's all it takes. That's, that's just like saying, hey, good job. That's all it takes. Reporting from Camp Iwate, Japan, I'm PFC Joseph Samudio for the 69th Public Affairs Detachment. Well, that is it for this special edition of the GrizzCast. And as always, if you have any story ideas, please contact us using the email that you see on the screen. We hope you enjoyed it. Reporting from Camp Iwate, Northern Japan, I'm Sergeant First Class Paul Wade. Domo arigato, sayonara. <laughs>